One question we get all the time is, does Medicare cover aid services? Or do they actually pay for, for someone to come and sit with your loved one? Does Medicare cover that? Does insurance cover that? That is a really, really great question. Survey said! I would say yes and no. It is a yes in terms of Medicare does cover some of those services. And no, it doesn't. In this podcast, me and our director of nursing are going to talk about aspects of Medicare where aid services can be reimbursed and you can get good care for aid services within home health, within hospice, and within VA. So let's talk about this real quick with Emlyn, our director of nursing. Enjoy. You guys are doing good. We're hanging out again after work today and talking about a topic uh, that we hear a lot, mm -hmm. uh, which is aid services. And does Medicare pay for aid services? Do they not? Does insurance pay for aid services? So I figured we could just literally walk through together um, aid services and talk about who covers aid services, mm -hmm. uh, especially when you have families uh, that are figuring out care for their loved ones it gets really expensive Ten. i mean you could you could spend up to close to on average i mean like close to eight thousand dollars a month for an assisted living facility i figured we could break that in break that down together um, and then hopefully this will be a, a big help for families cool so let's talk about uh, what covers what insurance covers what medicare covers and aid services Okay. So Medicare covers for aid services underneath home health mm -hmm. and hospice. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about in home health, what, what does an aid look like and what does that look like for someone to get aid services at home? So an aid on home health is tricky because the whole goal of home health is to maintain or regain your independence as much as possible. So an aid may be for a temporary amount of time. Um, so say you come in home health and you've got two or three caregivers that are making arrangements to come and stay with you because you have this new level or decline of capability um, and you need an aid for uh, a certain amount of time while your physical therapist or occupational therapist works with you. So it's just another discipline that's part of home health. Um, and then uh, with the goal of it being very short term so that it is there to kind of get you through the place of back to mm. your independence or back to being able to do it as much by yourself or mm. safely by yourself. So how, how many times do you, do you see an aid usually coming out? Is it for the whole 60 days? Is it for the whole time? Or I guess it no, depends. No, usually it, it's a period of time. So sometimes we've seen it like in the middle of an episode where it could be like, I had this daughter who was here. She's gonna have to take a two week vacation. I need, you know, that extra assistance during those two weeks, just two visits. Um, or it could be at the start of an episode while they're just coming out of a rehab or just coming out of hospital and they need kind of that extra help and safety while they are working with their physical therapist to get them mm. stronger. So that could be, um, you know, once or twice a week for three or four weeks while they're working. Mm. Um, so I would say, uh, uh, usually I get somewhere between the number of two and six visits um, during an episode, which an episode for home health lasts 60 days. Gotcha. So I think it would be probably helpful to, to talk about um, a patient situation when, when they actually need it. So maybe like someone is coming out of the hospital, uh, How what does that look like for an aide to be a part of the plan of care for a patient that maybe has... Um, a joint replacement mm -hmm. um, and they need a little bit more help they didn't go straight to a rehab but they came home uh, mm -hmm. what would an aid look like and how long would you think that Medicare or the insurance would cover an aid coming out so again the goal is to get them back up and walking so if it's a joint replacement patient they're probably only going to get one or two maybe three visits it just depends on who's staying at home with them mm -hmm. maybe they go home and they're living all by themselves and they're having a little bit slower of a recovery time they may 
we may be able to say, okay, maybe one, two, or three visits, like just for the first three weeks while your physical therapist is working with you, that's a reasonable amount mm. of time. Um, again, the goal is to get them back up and being as independent as possible. Mm. So, so what the skilled nurse evaluates for that need on admission. Mm. Um, so when we do your start of care, either the skilled nurse or the therapist may say, oh, they've got this social situation happening, can the home health come alongside them, provide an aid for this amount of time? And then the director of nursing and the, the therapist or the skilled nurse kind of comes up with a plan of care of what's the most helpful way to help this patient get back to their independence. That's a good point because I think a lot of times families don't realize that under home health, if it's Medicare or insurance that's covering it, that aid has to be credentialed, right? Yes. So they have to be, they're basically not just an aid, they're a certified nurse they assistant. They are licensed. Yeah, yes. so they're licensed and they're underneath the supervision of the nurse. The nurse or the therapist, Right, yes. so then the nurse comes out, does, that eval does the evaluation for the joint and says, okay, I think based off of the need of this patient, mm -hmm. you're gonna get two weeks of, of aid services two times a week based off of how the patient's doing. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of times families, you know, don't realize that for this specifically, this skilled need, they have to have, be credentialed. They do, and um, there's regulation behind supervision of an aid as well too, because they are licensed, but they're, um, based on their license, they're only capable of doing tasks. Mm -hmm. So the skilled nurse or the therapist will, will do what's called a uh, home health aid care plan mm -hmm. um, and that care plan is very specific so it's um, dressing it's incontinence it's shower or a bed bath or a shower with a chair um, it's um, tidying the patient's area it's um, their perineal care their hair washing their shampooing their combing mm -hmm. um, it's very specific tasks that the skilled nurse or the therapist assign to the aid to help with mm -hmm. so if if the aid comes in and their aid care plan says for them to give them a shower with the shower chair, um, comb their hair, and change their linens, that is all the aid is allowed to do mm. in their visit. They are not allowed to clean up your kitchen or do your dishes or even help you brush your teeth because it's not on the aid care plan. Yeah. Um, so that's also comes alongside of the skilled nurse or the therapist has to communicate with the family, with the patient of what do you really specifically need help with mm. so that the aide can come in and do those specific tasks. They're not allowed to decide like, oh, you're feeling weaker today. Let's just do a wash up. Mm. No, your aid care plan says you have to do a shower. We have to follow that. Mm. So that's another, that's a really good point. I think a lot of times it's easy to to just think that the aid is there because insurance is paying. They can kind of do whatever mm -hmm. the family requests, but they literally have to go and be guided by the nurse mm -hmm. because their license is actually underneath the, mm -hmm. the nurse. So that, that's really great. Mm -hmm. If they come out of the hospital, there's probably gonna be specific disciplines that are scheduled to them. So they might have a skilled nurse, a physical therapist, an occupational therapist, or a speech therapist. Mm -hmm. Each one of those disciplines has specific reasons why they would be there. Um, the home health aid would be to come along in conjunction with those other disciplines to get that patient to a place where, like I said, while they're working with physical therapy, they're strengthening those muscles, they're um, working with skilled nursing on um, taking their medications correctly, all of those things, but then the home health aid is there for just a certain amount of time until, let's say, the occupational therapist can come in and they can help work with, with alongside the family to help them say, okay, we know there's a fall risk, we know there's confusion, how do we put things in place to be safe for that patient to be doing their daily needs, like brushing mm. their teeth and standing at the sink for a, a lengthy amount of time to get ready, or picking out their clothes, can they pick out their clothes, um, all of those things. So the home health aid is usually a very limited amount of time because the goal is for occupational yep. therapy to, to come teach. in and teach and, and um, meet certain goals of, 
okay, you weren't able to do this at the start of care, now you can do this. Mm. Um, so the aid is there to just kind of help transition. It's not supposed to be there for the entire episode. Gotcha. Which is why a lot of times most home healths do not even provide or offer any yeah. aid. Because it's not, it's not a lot of yes. a need. I mean, it, so, it is a need. So if it is a long-term need, that's kind of where we talk about personal care services. Mm -hmm. So that's privately paid aid services. So mm -hmm. say you want to privately pay somebody to come in and help on Monday, Wednesday, Friday for the first four hours of the day when they wake up from 6 a.m. to, to 10 a.m., they need help getting dressed, routine, you know, doing all their things yeah. and you can privately pay for that mm -hmm. and they can do whatever you want them yeah. to because you're working with an outside agency right. um, when that agency comes in they literally assess how long do you need someone these are our rates and then what do you need them to do right. and they are allowed to clean up your home do light housekeeping start your laundry do the dishes um, those kinds of things they are allowed to do those things because you're paying them yeah. to do those yeah. things yeah. Um, and generally those aid services nowadays in Texas at least they cost somewhere between the area of 25 and 30 dollars an hour so yeah. they do get Upwards, pricey yeah. and most of the agencies do require a minimum of four hours yeah. so they're a huge benefit um, I've had patients with or family members with with um, their loved one in an assisted living facility yeah, yeah. and yes the assisted living facility is there but they don't have someone or say their loved one lives out of state they don't have someone to be like I need to go get them groceries and right. I need to start their laundry and I need to you know make sure their med box is filled or something yeah. like that um, you know all these things are tasks that you can give to a non-skilled person um, of basically you know, helping or sitting or watching with that patient to really the big reason is one for safety, but two is just to help them. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's, it's, it's so important because I think when, when families understand that personal care is there to kind of, it's really what you need. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay. It's very customized. It's customized. There's really no it's really far a, that you can go. Yeah. Too and far. It, it all depends on the agency. I think a lot of issues and frustrations that we hear a lot with families is that, oh, you know, I'm working with this company, but then the aid's not showing up or, you know, they're having staffing issues. And the reality of it is just the, it's just the industry, right? Mm -hmm. It's that you're, you're paying someone a certain amount to come out and to be with your loved one. So the expectation kind of has to change a little mm -hmm. bit because yeah. you're, you're now dealing with some, someone or an entity that's trying to look for people to come out and sit and care for your loved one. Mm -hmm. So it's not a, it's a, it's a tough industry, right? But I think a lot of times if families can understand, okay, you know, take your time, try to find someone, right? If you're not happy, go to another yeah. one. Yeah. It's okay. There are a lot of caregiving agencies oh, yeah. and you do have to just find the right one that yeah. works for you. Staffing yeah. is always a challenge no matter yeah. which agency yeah. you go to. So. Yeah. And the thing is, a lot of times families will say, well, I'm not going to go through a company. Let me just find my own person and hire them. And you, could, you can do that. I've heard I mean, so many people recently, they yeah. found somebody on Facebook. Yeah. And I'm like, well, just do a background check. Yeah, <laughs> do your background check. Figure out, like, what, I mean, that the liability then is on you, yeah. right? And so most of the time you go through a company the because... The scheduling's on the you. The scheduling's on you. Like, oh, what if that yeah. person gets sick? then you're kind of out of luck, right? So, or they have a car accident, God forbid, or the niece is, you know, having a birthday party and they need to go. So that's why most families go with companies because then it's like, okay, if that's- Someone person, else is dealing yeah, with the someone, scheduling. Yeah, someone else can deal with the scheduling and then that headache is not on the family. Mm -hmm. That's a big thing because you may pay less, right? Mm -hmm. You may pay less to pay for someone out of pocket, but you're, you're paying in a little higher rate for yeah, those headaches for that to be relieved. Yeah, yeah. So. We get that a lot as well. So um, I think another thing that families um, need to know is about the another payer of private pay, which is long-term care insurance. Mm -hmm. So the thing about long-term care insurance, and this is you know through any type of long-term care insurance company, you can go to several like Networth, John Hancock, just big names, mm -hmm. right? Um, long-term care insurance has to be set up way before you exhaust that benefit. And mm -hmm. so a lot of times, it's important for families to plan well. Mm -hmm. So if you're if you are an adult child and you have parents who are in their 60s and upward and they're healthy, 
if I were you, I always tell people, like, go ahead and, and get them a long-term care insurance mm -hmm. policy. Mm -hmm. Let them pay 150 bucks a month or however much it may cost. Yeah. Pay into that. So then when you do need that down the road, you can pull down $3,000 or $4,000 to help in those situations. So the way that works is that a lot of personal care agencies will will work with a long-term care insurance mm -hmm. agency or they bill from an, a long-term care insurance agency. They'll essentially say, okay, it's going to cost $1,000 a month for you know, Grandma Lucy's care mm -hmm. um, on these certain days, the long-term care insurance policy will give you a, a percentage. They will pay for a percentage mm -hmm. of that care. Um, usually they kind of have a cap amount of like, we'll pay at least, you know, I said a thousand, that's a very low number, but mm -hmm. we'll pay at least $700 worth of it. So the other $300 would be out of your yep. pocket essentially. Mm -hmm. So it's just working with that long-term care insurance policy and with the agency right. that you choose yep. uh, to discuss the finances. Yep. And about the need. So if the frequency, if you need more hours then, or you need less hours, mm -hmm. sometimes that policy will cover all of it. We don't have to pay out of pocket. Yes. If you need more hours, then you may, the policy will only cover X amount and the rest you'll have to pay out of pocket. Yep. Um, another beautiful thing is that long-term care insurance also covers assisted living as well mm -hmm. and memory care. So it's the same type of deal, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's if you're planning well ahead of time, you can you can say, okay, I know that you know mom or dad's wishes or my grandma and grandpa's wishes are they do want to live in an assisted living facility. Okay, if they're healthy now, then you start paying into a plan, so you're saving up for when that time does yeah. come that you can yeah. per you can do that. And I think it's just conversations, right? It's just and sometimes, you know, it's it's hard to talk about those conversations yeah. because nobody thinks about it. I think the the numbers and the finance conversations, is, yes. uh, it's a hard one. Yeah. It's, a, it's very costly. Yeah. Um, I mean, the most, the, the most cost that people spend as they get older is their health care costs. It's true. There's yeah. so a lot of similarities between the end of life and the beginning of yeah. life. Yep. There's a yep. lot of costs that are associated with having a baby and putting him in daycare and all the things mm -hmm. is the same thing with, yep. with an adult. So another part we were talking about, another part that ties into the payer of personal care services is the VA, right? Oh, so, yeah. the, so the VA covers actually a lot of care if the veteran meets specific qual qualifications and criteria. Yeah. So give example, say for instance, a veteran that served in the military uh, was honorably discharged and they served their com com uh, their country well Say for instance, they need just help with bathing or house chores. What they can do is they can go to their local VA uh, outpatient clinic or the hospital and get registered underneath the VA. Mm -hmm. So I think that we probably do another, I'd probably do another video on that kind of detailing um, what that looks like. But the beautiful thing is that it may take a month or two, but once you're approved, you can get at least up to 20 hours of care. So that means essentially what it's called homemaker aid services. Mm -hmm. Basically, uh, the homemaker is paid a certain amount of hours and then the agency is paid a certain amount of hours. Mm -hmm. So the VA may say, you have 75 hours to use. I'll pay, you know, 45 of them to your wife, mm -hmm. quite literally, mm -hmm. and the other, so 40 to the agency that yep. is providing the staff for the other 40 hours yep, yep. Um, so it can it can divide and, and conquer that way but it's beneficial for the caregiver to quite literally be paid for those hours yep, taking yep, care of them yep, so, yeah so yeah what it's and a that, very big benefit. it's a huge benefit so that that caregiver has to then contract with an agency mm -hmm. and then they get paid by the agency yes um, but it's actually money in their pocket it is which is nice it's and it's very very cool yeah it's a big help because a lot of our you know veterans do so much for the country I think it's 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 such a beautiful blessing to see like okay you don't have to pay out of pocket I think a lot of people don't realize that 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 benefit is there so yeah. we always encourage people to go yeah. and, and discuss with your local VA yeah. about what the options are yeah and the, I think the biggest thing though is it's sometimes the the, the process of it is really hard it is. and that's it's a lot what, of steps. it's a lot of steps but there are companies out there that are willing to help you mm -hmm. get into the that benefit so then they can actually take care of you. Yeah. So it's a good thing. Uh, so I think the last part that we're talking about for aid services is hospice care. Mm -hmm. So what does aid services look like under hospice care? 
So aid services under hospice is the best benefit. Um, I would say it's mm -hmm. a lot of times why people choose hospice. Um, so there really is no, the regulation behind the aid is that it is a specific amount of frequency and the care plans are specific exactly like we discussed on home health, right? Mm -hmm. So the skilled nurse goes out and, and decides and agrees with the family on what the aid is gonna be coming and doing. Um, so again, they are not there to do light housekeeping. They're not there to do your dishes. They're not there, there to do your laundry. Mm -hmm. um, th yes, they will tidy up after themselves. So they will put the laundry in certain right. places, but right. um, they uh, they are there to help with specific tasks. So if a patient is bed bound, they're going to be doing a bed bath so many times a week as right. agreed upon by the nurse and the family. Um, and then you get to decide. Generally, the aid services are continuing through your entire hospice right. stay. Um, so it could be, you know, your 90 days, or it could be your entire year and a half stay on hospice. There's usually not like a cutoff point of like, you only get so many visits. Mm -hmm. um, so it generally varies between two to five days a week. Um, a lot of people, some people only want it once a week and yeah. that's fine too. Um, a lot of facilities rely on the hospice to come in and help with the morning care um, because they already have so many other residents yeah. that they're taking care of. So they rely on the hospices to come in and do that morning care. Um, and that's just getting the patient up, dressed for the day, helping them brush their teeth, and then down to breakfast, and then changing their sheets two or three times a week, especially if it's in an assisted living or in a memory care. They have lots of other yeah. residents, so they rely on the hospices yeah, to help with home. that. Yeah. Or a group home, yeah. yeah. That's really good. So, but an aid on hospice is a huge benefit. Yeah. It's, it really is. On average, how long are the aids like there in the home? They're usually there somewhere between 30 minutes and an hour. I would say a good aid is there for 30 to 45 minutes okay. because it takes 20 to 30 minutes to do a bath yep. and then you may be helping them comb their hair or brush their teeth yep. or get their breakfast yep. heated up in the microwave or something like that. So yep. um, most good aid visits are 30 to 45 minutes, I would yep. say. Okay. And the frequency is based off of the nurse assessment yeah. and then the agency every agency is different as well yep every agency is different um, just depends on the circumstance of the patient where they're living at the aid availability and staffing availability all of that stuff so we work around it but I you know it's hard to have six patients in a certain location that all want yeah. an 8 a.m. visit. Yeah. Um, you know, if there's one patient or two or three patients in one facility, we're gonna try and put the same aid in there yeah. so they can do them all at the same time. That's a good point. I think there's, I think um, the logistics behind staffing is huge is when it comes to aid services. And yeah. I think if families are able to kind of have an understanding, um, that'll help their whole disposition when it comes it to helps it. expectation right so if you set yep. the expectation up front of you know I understand you want that 8 a.m. time spot I'll do my best yep. but I've got an aid that's 55 miles away at that hour mm -hmm. I'm not sure I could promise that right, right. but um, it's setting the expectation of we are here to help you let's find a middle ground so if we can't help you in the morning would it be more helpful to have somebody in the afternoon right. maybe your loved one prefers an afternoon or an evening nap right. um, and we can come and do a little bath or whatever right before they do their, their yeah. afternoon nap maybe that's yeah. um, so it's it's figuring out how we can best help families right. right and communication I think it's the communication between the nurse that does the admission mm -hmm. and the assessment and the patient's caregiver right. to understand what, what works best for them. Right. Yeah, that's good. What are some many closing final thoughts when it comes to aid services or just in, in the benefit of aid services between home health, hospice, and personal care? I think you just have to keep the goal in mind. What is the goal for an aid? Um, so if it's someone to help you long term but you're not on hospice, personal care services right. is probably the best option. If it's short term, kind of in a stint and you're on home health, that's what you're going to get. If it's hospice, there's not a whole lot of limitations and you can get that benefit for a long period of time. Um, just depends on where you're at and, and what what care your, your loved one needs. That's awesome. Great, great. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope it was uh, helpful. Well, yeah, we get these questions a lot. Uh, we'll continue to do more uh, explanation in videos on uh, healthcare at home. 
Um, we'll see you guys next time. We'll talk about something next time. Next time. Put some information in the chat. Like and subscribe when you guys can. And we'll get to see you soon. Comment what you want to talk about next time.